What's up you guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian Hansen. In this episode, we're exploring Lake Sentaro. Let's go! Ayo, kita come on! Let's continue exploring Borneo! guys i've had a great few days stay here at sendang hotel and resto if you ever come to badao uh, maybe to go to malaysia then there really isn't a lot of hotels here and this is definitely the best one in the area so terima kasih banyak ya guys thank you yeah makasih i've had a really good stay they make really nice food and they've just been taking great care of me so time to get on the road all right and guys today is a special day because we are going to a national park we're going to the lake Sentarum national park it's only about one and a half hours from here there are more than 200 different bird species there there are more than 140 different mammals and 23 of those animals mammal species are endemic to that area so let's go to Sentarum let's start exploring it and hopefully we will have great weather today all right guys very quick ride today less than an hour and it seems we have already arrived at the homestay it's called Minau homestay and I talked to the owner, he said they only have one room that has its own toilet. And that's the room I got, so... Uh, that sounds nice. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. You! We made it. Nice! Let's go and check it out, guys. I then checked into Manua Impran Homestay. Supposedly the best homestay in all of Lanjak according to my Google Maps. I had cover for Machan and a great sunshine spot for the afternoons and a great room as well. In Lanchak there is no electricity from 6 in the morning to 5 in the afternoons. But today they were using a genset because they had a special guest, Randy, the founder of the famous brand Hande. Him and his assistant Kusuma were doing a workshop for some of the local businesswomen in how to succeed with selling their products on social media. His company Handeb is in the business of selling fashionable bags and baskets made with wood coming here from Kalimantan. But not just at any cost, because Randi is one of the few who cares greatly about sustainability, culture, the forest and his fellow Dayak people. Truly an inspiring guy. And after unpacking, I head out to explore the city of Lanjak. All right, guys, so this afternoon I'm just driving around here in the small local village and uh, Machan is making quite the attention here, right? <laughs> Everyone to take pictures with Machan. Yeah, what is it? Gasting. 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 Traditional, yeah? Okay, show it again. Yeah? Ah, look at this guy's traditional toys. Wow, <laughs> 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 Hi girls. Hello. Jangan malu. Yeah, boleh, boleh. Keren. Makasih ya, bro. So what I've done is that I have hired a captain to take me out into the river tomorrow. So I just took the care of that now and it will cost me around 600,000. And apparently it's gonna be really difficult to see orangutans. Not as easy as I thought because there's not really the time for it. But tomorrow we will go out to the river, get a great look and yeah, see what we find. Okay. Hey, I'm going to Yeah. Okay, 
Oh, you. <laughs> so as I had booked the trip for the following day, it was time to find some dinner and head early to bed. But that day I didn't have to eat alone because I had found a small local resto with great company. Hello. <laughs> Nasi goreng. Enak. <laughs> Sip. Mantap. Mantul. Mantul. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning guys. It is my first morning here in Lanjuk, Lanjuk? Lanjak. Lanjak. It's my first morning here in Lanjak. And this morning I'm going with Moor. Hey, Moor. Yes, hello. His full name is actually Moor Honey, yeah? Moor honey. <laughs> like Moor Honey. I like that. So he will take me on his boat out to Lake Sentaro. Let's explore this area from the water and see what we can find. Let's get to it. Another beautiful day here in the village. All right, and just a five minute ride and we have arrived here at more terminal speed than our Sentarum. If you guys ever want to go and explore Lake Sentarum, Come here to Lanjak and find this spot. And there are two options, guys. If you want to go out on the lake, you can rent a speedboat. It's a bit more expensive. Or you can rent the economy way that I'm doing. Local small wooden boat. More, see ya. Okay, see ya. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get the adventure started. Okay. Oh. Okay, Aman. Aman. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah, wow. Okay, Captain. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Ayo, kita come on. As Isa would say in Kerinci, Ayo, kita come on. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Captain Moore. Yeah. Ah. And so we set out, looking for adventure, because Sentarum is not just a lake, it's also home to several Dayak villages, and I wanted to see how they lived. Covering 132,000 hectares, the massive lake actually dries out from July to September each year during the dry season. It's then even possible to ride a motorcycle across some parts of it. And I will later find out just how this affects the people who's living out here on the lake. All right, guys, we have arrived at this small village called Semangin. Yeah? Yeah, Semangin. Semangin. You can only get to this village if you use a boat. So let's go and explore the life here on the river. Whoa. Bisa, yeah? Bisa. Aman. 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 Hey. Hello guys. Hello. Apa kabar? Baik. Hey, Chris. How are you? Chris. Oh, bisa bahasa Inggris, Pak. I'm from Jakarta. Oh, from dari Jakarta. <laughs> orang Jaksel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Chris. Ini yes. orang Jerman. Orang Jerman? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Ah, oke. Okay. Oh, oh. Just kidding. Ada bule Jakarta. lagi di sini ya. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so I just met with very nice guys here in Semangin. They're actually working for a German NGO to help do ecotourism out here. They just told me that in this village they are producing a lot of honey. They say that it's actually one of the only places in the world where they take honey from beehives that are out in the middle of the lake. And those beehives can can carry anything from 2 to 18 kilos of raw honey and right now on the other side of the river here they are processing it right now so we're gonna go and take a look and try out supposedly some of the best honey in the world let's do it but before trying out their honey we made a quick stop at a local production house where they are famous for making a special variant of the well-known rice cracker called krupuk Selamat pagi. Ini untuk bikin 
keropok. Oh, keropok ya. Yeah. So the guys also told me that this is a really good place to try a krupuk because in this place they make it differently. They don't use rice powder, but they only use fish to make these krupuk. Normally I'm not a big fan of fish, but uh, we still have to try it and see how it tastes. And they are making all the paste here, I see. Okay, today they are processing about 60 kilograms of fish meat. That's a lot of fish, yeah? Yeah. Tinggal di sini harus suka ikan ya. Yeah. yeah, have to, <laughs> have to. Banyak gigi. And then uh, they are going to cook it, boiling it in three hours. After that, they dry it and then cut it like that. Wah wow, besar ya. Kalau yang ini bahan berat juga. Uh, we will try it later in the homestay, yeah? Okay. So in terms of electricity out here, they say it's private, meaning they have to use genset to make electricity. So it's rather expensive if you have a genset running all day because that uses gasoline, right? So, uh, yeah, that's why they try to save as much as they can um, by not using listric or electricity all day. Ada. <laughs> Ada buaya di sini. Ada buaya sungai, buaya danau. Buaya buaya darat juga. Ada. Coba. I'm not sure if I want to see crocodiles while sitting here in the boat or not, you know. <laughs> All right. Terus sudah lihat buaya di sini? Sudah. Ya, besar. Ada yang besar ada yang kecil. So the people that live here they often see crocodiles right here in the river and next to their village. Different life, eh? Ada honey, sini. Oh, ada. So this right up there is the big beehive. You can see. There is no sidewalk or field here, it's just water. So when they want to harvest, then they have to take the boat like this out here on the lake and then climb up there to get it. Wow, can you see this guys? All the bees are sitting there and they're moving like in a formation. And wow, besar sekali, yeah? They are really big, the bees. We then went back across the river to get a taste of the biggest production of the village, the golden liquid. Ah, so this is this is what you do for the for the NGO, yeah? Yes, exactly. You basically educate the locals here how to promote this area yes. as a eco tourism eco -tourism, spot. Yes, we have honey here, and this is already already the fifth time we are here, uh, starting from. Um, try to change their mindset mindset about how they're doing how they run the uh, the, the business the objective of uh, creating this association for from the beginning is for uh, stabilizing the price of the honey because back in 10 years ago the honey price only 10,000 20,000 but now it's already become uh, steady at uh, 110,000 until 130,000 I then learned that raw honey is almost as thin as water when it's extracted directly from the beehives. Raw honey and before process. So it's more thin, there is still some water content in it, that's why it's still thin. Cheers. But to get that thick and golden honey we all know, the water content must be evaporated from the sugar, which they used to do over fire in a metal container. But today, they have changed to evaporating machines that helps to preserve more flavor, which they power by using solar panels on the roof. Many supermarkets sell fake honey because it's a lot cheaper, but this is made from sugar syrup. You know you're eating real honey when you get that sweet taste of various flowers in your mouth, as the bees did when they sucked out the nectar from thousands of flowers during the process. 
fried rice. Fried rice. Every day. <laughs> okay, let's try some krupuk, yeah? Normally, actually, I don't like fish. Uh, it smells a lot like fish. <laughs> Wow, and up. Yesterday, I hang out with some local boys. They were playing billiard, you know, uh -huh, yeah. pool. Pool. And then one of them, he say, "You can eat nasi goreng or indomie every day." And I say, "Yeah," because my doctor, he say, "If you eat indomie every day, it will be very good for you." Then he say, "How much you pay for this doctor?" <laughs> And then he say, you know what? I think maybe your doctor, he has Indomie shop, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, terima kasih ya. Bye. Sampai ketemu lagi ya. Hati-hati di jalan. Yeah. Titi DJ. Oh, Titi DJ ya. Yeah. <laughs> Makasih. Mur, we ready? Okay, chef, ready. Yeah. Okay. You can choose many variations of tours out on Lake Sentarum and I was interested to learn more about the life out here. So we continued even further out into the lake in search for a traditional Dayak village. All right, guys, we've made it to our next stop, which is called Sungai Plai. Oi. Clearly, I have to mind where I'm stepping here. This is some very old wood because out here they make traditional textiles. So I want to try and see how they make it out here. And clearly, you can see that this is a place you can only come to with boat. <laughs> Everything I step on here is wiggling. Look at this wood. Does this look like something you want to step on? I think so not. Hello, guys. Lagi ngapain? Angkat batu. Batu? Oh, batu. And Moore is doing a fantastic job today. Good job, Moore. Oh, yeah. This is the same kind of ladder I saw in Matawai up to the houses. Interesting. We're in tribe land now, baby. You love it. Wah, oh, panas sekali. Wah, oh, sudah sampai. It's got to be at least 36 degrees out here today. A uh, small issue here, guys. They just put in new concrete <laughs> here, so we have to go down somehow. The guys we had just met, who was collecting rocks, they used these rocks to create concrete, which they were now using to build their own walking path between the river and the village. Oh, yeah. Papa, papa. <laughs> okay. Terus. Hello. Hello. Salam kenal, saya Chris. Adi. Adi? Hmm. Nah. Berapa orang tinggal di sini? 25 lagi nak lah. 45. 45. Kakak atau orang? Orang. Orang. Jiwa, jiwa. Jiwa. Okay. Hey, bro. Saya Chris. Gawin. Kenal. Huh? Gawin. Gawin? Yeah. Yeah. Only 40 people live here, guys. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, this is my first time in a proper Dayak Iban longhouse. Ah, oh, very nice. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Hello, Dave. Saya Chris. Yes, Bu, salam kenal. Saya Chris. Apa kabar? Baik. Sehat, Bu. Sehat. Oh, Pak. Saya Chris. Halo, Pak. Saya Chris. Halo, Dave. Oh, so each section here. They all share the same hall, it looks like. And then they each have their own room in there. This longhouse was built in 2001. Each section in the house is called the bilik. And all biliks were surprisingly large. It was really interesting to see 
what a mix it was of older relics and also newer things. Here they were studying first grade social studies as the young kids are homeschooled. And as this was one big house, I make sure I greeted everyone as I was now a guest in their longhouse. <laughs> Hello, Dick. Mm. Hey, Chris. Mm. How about our? Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, panas hari ini ya. Ada AC. And I then sat down with the head of the village, Pa Alex, for a chat about the challenges of living in the middle of a big lake. Tapi ada genset di sini ya. Uh, genset ada, tapi sementara sekarang itu kita pakai sulasir kecil. Oh, ada sulah? Sulah, sulah kecil. Di atas? Ya, ya di atas. Ya. Biar uh -huh. lampu ini. Kalau kita mira, kalau kita pakai genset, dengan kondisi harga BBM sekarang tuh ya, udah, sudah udah naik bisa, ya, ya, sudah mahal ya. Lagi, udah mahal. Seperti yang 14, ya, 15, 15, 15, Setiap keluarga tinggal di sini harus beli ya. eh, eh, solar cell ya, ya. Karena karena da, karena untuk kita penerangan. beli itu, hmm. itu pun kita buat untuk beli itu kita harus tabung uangnya dulu banyak-banyak yeah. baru bisa beli dan solar seperti solar kecil berapa harganya itu kalau solar kecil 3 jutaan lah oh. kalau yang kecil mahal ya yang mahal ya, apa yang seperti lebih mahal kalau tinggal di sini itu minyak atau semua dari barang sembako Transportnya BBM itu tentu dah masuk mahal semua oh, kalau di sini. Iya, karena harus bawa semua ke ya. sini ya. Jadi semua lebih, lebih. mahal waktu hmm. eh, minyak lebih mahal. Lebih mahal. Ya. Kalau dari sini ke Lanja kurang lebih PP-nya itu kurang lebih 20 liter. Berapa? 20 liter. Kalau air besar Dan, gini. Nah, kalau air besar gini, gini. Kalau musim kemarau lebih besar lagi. Ada yang sampai bisa, bisa 70, bisa 70, bisa 60. Mahal ya. ya 300 kalau ribu. 300 ribu kita mau. Aduh. Ibu. Nenek. Ah. Umur Jadi, berapa? Ini ada lebih dari 100 lah. Lebih dari 100? Nah. Wah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, luar biasa. Semangat, Bu. Tidak dengar. Ya, pendengaran dia oh. kurang. <laughs> the families living here have children who goes to school on the mainland. So they have placed two Wi-Fi modems on top of 20 meter long bamboo poles to get signal with a bucket on top to protect for the rain so they can stay in contact with their children. Now that is creative. Most of the men do fishing and farming and one of the ways the women help to generate income is by creating and selling traditional Dayak Iban weaving called ikat. Each pattern has different meanings and can be worn in different ways. Susi is one of the women who specializes in making ikat. It's quite a time-consuming process because just one centimeter takes a good hour to make and it requires full attention to detail. Susie normally works on the patterns a few hours in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Most of the elders do weaving as well as they can no longer do hard labor. And one of the elders showed me a pattern she had been creating by weaving about an hour a day for a year a rather large but very beautiful ikat that she was now trying to sell for two and a half million rupiah. So guys, it feels like it is 40 degrees in here. It is extremely hot. And you know, when I came here the first 20 minutes and I saw the, the scarves that they make here, I thought, ah, okay, yeah, sure, they sell it to tourists whenever there's tourists here. But actually I realized there's not a lot of tourists here anymore because they have a visitor's logbook where you can see all the people that have been here. And I just went through and there have only been like a handful of foreigners in 2022. And now I know that how many hours they spent making these scarves, so they don't know it yet.
and they don't understand what I'm talking about right now, but I will definitely buy one just to support, but also because it's a beautifully made craft. So yeah, let's support, yeah. But it's been great having my first experience here in a Iban longhouse. And guys, it was a fantastic day out on the water, but now I'm here back at my favorite resto here in Lanjak, hanging out with the guys that are watching some YouTube. This YouTube, right? Uh, and we're having some nasi goreng. Okay, see you guys. Yeah. Hati-hati di jalan ya. Makan dulu guys, that's gonna be it for today. Taro ini. Mandi dulu. Mandi dulu. Okay deh. So, so cute. Selamat pagi. Untuk makan. Oh, gitu. Ada di sini ya? Banyak di sini. Banyak. Anak-anak biasa cari. Jadi jual ini bu atau makan? Jadi makan anak-anak suka. Oh anak-anak suka makan uh -huh. itu ya? Uh -huh. Direbus ya, dulu. Gila. Tuh, makasih ya bu. Uh -huh. Hei, Jangan lupa nonton ya. Oke. Okay. Siap-siap. Nanti abis aku tapi mandi. Om, om. Yeah. Nanti aku habis mandi, nanti aku buka YouTube. Good morning, guys. It is another beautiful morning here in Lanjak. It is now around 8 o'clock and the city is fully awake. I just went out with a bike. I like to say hi to the kids in the morning. Some of them are off today. And in the mornings here, the kids, they love to just swim in the, in the lake because, you know, they have access directly to the lake from the houses. And right now, because it's high tide, the water actually covers all the way up on the road. So some of the places you have to drive through water just to get to the houses. And now I've come back here to my favorite small restaurant here in Lanjak, where I'm having the same thing every day, nasi goreng, and just chatting with the, with the locals. The good life here in Lanjak, the very local life, and I really like it. Military moor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moor. Terima kasih banyak ya. Okay, good oh, job. Thank you so much ya. Terima kasih ya pak. Okay, motor keren ya? Ya, keren. Yeah, keren keren. Mau? Mau? Pakai kacamata dulu. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. I had a fantastic stay here at Lake Sentarum. Don't forget to visit Lanjak. It is a small city, but it's a fantastic area with a lot of great people. So stay tuned for the next episode because I will be going on an incredible adventure as I will once again be living with an indigenous tribe, the Dayak Iban tribe. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. And until next time, da da. Yeah.